Dennis Rodman can guard one through five. He's one of the how many players in NBA history can guard one through five? Shit, only a couple. Draymond, Dennis, and you. I can't guard fives. I can't guard. I tried to do that shit a couple times. Boy, damn, these niggas big as hell, ain't you? Can't Man, see shit. Lewis Scola scored on me two times. It was the easiest two points I ever gave up. I never forget Mo Cheeks saying. Young man, you got to give a little bit more resistance than that. I'm like, yo, I don't know what this dude just did, but like, there was nothing I could do. Like, he just put his ass into me, took like one dribble, just t- and he kept the ball high, just turned around, just put it in. I'm like, God damn. One time I guarded Brooke Lopez, like 18 feet away from the rim. We basically just walked to the rim into a smooth play. <laughs> you see how strong that nigga is? See, I'm like, bro, we not switching no more. I said, damn, I can't even see behind him, like physically, bro. <laughs> Support for Point Forward comes from Nissan. A call to adventure is just that. It's a call, and you should answer it. The 2024 Nissan Pathfinder has everything you need to get out there and find your own adventure. It's built to handle every epic route you can throw at it, like muddy jungle paths, snowy trails, and rolling sand dunes. The Pathfinder also has an available, intelligent four-wheel drive and offers seven different drive modes, so you'll never have to wonder, can my car handle this ever again? Adventure better with the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder. Learn more at NissanUSA.com. Intelligent four-wheel drive cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. Point. Forward. ET, what a beautiful Friday it is. You know what I was thinking about when I was on my way over here? I love the name they have for Angel Reese in Chicago. Chi-Town Barbie. And all I can think about is that West Side and South Side vernaculars, and it's very aggressive regardless of gender. Yeah, for sure. What you talking about? Uh, you know how, like, I, this, no, bro, bro, I love it, bro. And it's very basketball like lingo and energy. And so for me to see the energy in the game, the Chicago Sky versus Indiana Fever. I was like, wow. It was like it was a real energy and vibe in there that was very Chicago like. Bro, the city gonna come out, G. It felt like I remember going to um the finals a couple years ago and it felt like a Chicago public league game. Aha. Uh-huh. And it felt like man, when when the basketball is good, G, everything is perfect. Like the world is better in Chicago. Like you understand what I'm saying? It's like you just got true fans out there. Generations of maybe like a three-year-old there and some 85-year-old man there. And, and I think one thing that occurs to the city that's really appreciated about the sky, it's just like them really, you know, putting on and setting up. And, and Angel Reese, shit. Uh, I want to compare her to, man, a Joe Kim Noah. Somebody said Moses Malone. Oh, okay, fuck it. Give her Moses Malone, man. But like, you know what I'm saying? But like, she been putting up big numbers. No, absolutely. No, nah, I would say Asia Wilson's more Moses because she averaging like 28 and 14. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm talking about like there's a difference right now. Yeah, but I'm just saying her energy is crazy. Like she said, I'm a dog. You can't teach that. Like her presence alone, her getting an and one like how Joe had come back in the day, that could turn you up. Like her presence of even talking on defense to really turn you up. If you call her like a KG, sure, but... I think her energy is contagious and it's, and it's, it really sets the tone. And like, you can't really be like, yo, so much. What's her skill set like more so than what her energy is like? Now, that was dope. You know, she's been killing it. She eight straight consecutive double doubles. Um, this last game against, uh, the Indiana Fever, she had 25 and 16, 10 in the fourth quarter. And here's the part where I was watching or paying close attention to the most expensive game ticket in WNBA history. Thank you, Angel. That's part of you too, Angel. That's crazy. <laughs> no, I'm saying because that's why. Yeah. Because when you're starting to do like sellouts everywhere, like Caitlin already went to go see the defending champs twice, right? Mm-hmm. They front loaded her schedule crazy. Yeah, and then they, I mean, they played at Lucas Oil. Then they they played at the football stadium. Oh, oh, I missed that. Yeah, oh, I, was, they, I, I missed it. They went to the Sparks in um, LA, and that was like a thirty five hundred dollar court side ticket. But well, I mean, I tickets is like NBA games. Yeah, but yeah, but in Chicago, bro, we doing that though. In Chicago dudes, man, like that was a hot ticket. Even Sam Thirsty asked him, like, you going to the game? You going to the game?" <laughs> so, like, I mean, bro, I'm I'm looking forward. I hope they make 
do a deep run. And I'm a big fan of uh, Coach Teresa Weatherstone. You talk about a legend. She's a real original legend. And there's a bunch of, you know, legends in the building. Cheryl Sloop's watching the game, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, the homie. Shit, Lil Durk or something that bad boy. Point. Forward. And today's news on Scottie Pippen, one of my favorite players of all times. And um, they are, they had somebody went back. I saw somebody went back and was saying he went and looked at all the games and <laughs> Michael Jordan's stats were inflated. I was just like, man, like, why, man? They'll figure out a way to go back in our history and try to course correct it. But we can't teach African American history in the South North anymore. Man, leave me alone with this nonsense. Bro, it's crazy. It, bro, that is wild, G. What's to Scotty, G? Like, when you sit here, bro, they did that tour with Luke Longley and Horace Grant called the No Bull Tour. Like, you know what I mean? And then he even went down so far to, like, when they said when <laughs> Mike's dad died, this fool ain't called him. Like, on purpose. On purpose, G. Like, you won't be happy until Mike turns his attention to you and has the security guards and beat your ass. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And then, like, pay the lawsuit. Because it's just like, what, what, what are you, how do you say stats are inflated? Or even you look at the game six, showing Mike had 38, Scotty had eight. That was like damn near all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Scotty. And, 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 and it, it was, it's speaking, it was, speaking of it, we were talking about this because Scotty said, that they inflated MJ stats, they said, because he was the one that would deflect the ball and MJ would pick it up and they would give MJ the um, credit for the steal. And I was thinking, I'm cracking up laughing because I used to get on Raymond Ritter all the time. And I was like, Raymond, I'm like my career is over. Like, I'm an old man. This is like like the year two in the, of the run. I'm like, hey, my career is over, so I'm fine with it. But stop giving my steals up. And Raymond would say, and shout out to Raymond Ritter because I love Raymond. And someone's going to try to, Flip the word. So if they try, we got to post just for Raymond because that's my guy. Now that I'm not playing, he was annoying because he was doing his job to the highest level of being an annoying media person. But he did his job very, very well. He's one of the best. But I'm like, Raymond, can I get my steal? Like, I know I have four steals tonight. I only got credit for one. He was like, well, someone else deflected the ball and you picked it up, so the steal went to them. Okay, cool. Two games later. Yo, man, I had like five steals tonight because I deflected five different passes that we intercepted and when it led to a layup. Well, you deflected it. You didn't gather it. So somebody else got the steal. All right, man, I'm out of here, fam. Point forward. Speaking of those two in our best draft classes of all time, because we just finished the draft. It's first year for the two-day draft. Super interesting. Um, and we'll, we'll dissect what we thought on the draft at a later date. But both Steph and Clay are in conversations of their both their individual classes being some of the top classes of all time. Obviously, we know about 1984. There was a documentary done on it, which is uh, Michael Jordan, Hakeem Olajuwon, Charles Barkley, John Stockton. Um, and we also talk about 2003, which was LeBron, Melo, Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade. Um, and then, uh, obviously, 96 is spoken on heavily because they just a bunch of guys um, they have more than just four guys where Kobe Bryant, Steve Nash, Ray Allen, Allen Iverson. So um, I'll dissect a few more, but let me know who you think one of you know, the best draft classes of all time were. 2011 had Kyrie, Clay, Kawhi, Jimmy Butler. 2018 had Luca, Shea, Jaron Jackson Jr., Trey Young. Uh, 98 had Dirk, Vince Carter, Paul Pierce, Antoine Jameson. 85 was a 85 at Patrick Ewing, Carl Malone, Joe Dumars, Chris Mullen. They had four guys that was on Dream Team too. 84 had four guys. They only had three guys, but one of them should have been with Akeem. I'm not gonna lie, bro. This 84 2003 looks like the bad shit because you arguably in, in 2003 you arguably got LeBron, arguably the greatest player of all time. You got Melo. Put him top 15 if you want, whatever you want to throw him at, top 20, whatever. You got D-Wade, arguably top two or three shooting guards of all yeah, time. Yeah, D-Wade was a real problem. A real problem. You got Chris Bosh that even during then, he was the, a, a problem as a three-headed monster. And, you know, an MVP candidate where he's averaging like 29 and 15 in Toronto. So that's pretty crazy. But then when you compare him 
Charles Barkley was a dog. Charles Barkley is so good. I don't think people understand how good Charles yeah. Barkley was. They yeah, have Char- no idea. Yeah, Charles Barkley is unbelievable. I can't He's still in any era, any era. Yeah. Today's era, Charles Barkley would destroy guys. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, shit, he was Draymond basically would bounce in a better handle. And could, Chris uh, Barkley could shoot that thing. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. What he put, 54 on Chris Webber and them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He been round, round, and rebound. And then shit, Akeem Olajuwon, damn near. I mean, he was just a problem, G. The two I, people don't know how good he was either. I mean, MJ dominated the 90s when he sat down. Akeem dominated the other two years. You know what I mean? So, like, when you sit when you sit there in the dream shake, all the moves really done, even during Ramadan, and he won, what, what, he won two championships? Did he win two championships at Houston, too? He won two chips in Houston. He had defensive player year a bunch of times. Uh, he was flirted with quadruple doubles on many occasions, points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks. He, he could have got a quintuple. Him and David Robinson were the few that could pull that off. Yeah, uh, John Stockton was an all-time assist leader and still leader. All NBA, no one to hit a he big missed, shot. He missed six games in 19 years, John Stockton. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't what know about, the correct number. is crazy. What about 96? Did you look at Kobe Bryant, Steve Nash, Ray Allen, Allen Iverson? I'm going to have to shout out Stephon Marbury in that draft. That was Steph was in draft. that draft. Steph was in that draft. Uh, Sharif Abdul-Rahim was in that draft. It's like Kerry we Kittles. should do Kerry Kittles, uh, Antoine Walker, I said already. Marcus what about Van Horn? Van Horn, I think he was after that. I think Van Horn was after that. But Marcus Camby was that dude in college at UMass. Yeah. That was a deep – like, they had 13 guys. Like, they had a 13 – Yeah, I got the t- a T-shirt. That's, yeah, they had some Mikey Walker. I mean, like, some Mikey Walker's – that's a Columbus dude. But when you're sitting there, that was a pretty crazy draft. I will say this. The 2018 draft is impressive, G. I mean – because if you uh, I mean, obviously you have Jaron Jackson Jr., Trey Young, Shea Gilgis, Alexander, Luka Doncic. So you already have two of the top five players in the world for yes. a span of maybe half or a decade. They're going to be running NBA yeah, that's up there. Trey Young is going to break hella records moving forward. And then mm-hmm. uh, who else is in that 2018? But that 2018 draft is kind of cracking, G. And I go back to it. Yeah, she got Mikael Bridges, uh, Michael Porter Jr., Dante DiVincenzo. You got um, Kevin Herter, or home Kevin Herter. Kevin Herter can hoop. But Kevin Herter's a problem. Damn, pretty Simons was in that draft class. How much more time are we giving Mo Bamba? Oh, that's not. Oh, okay. Yeah, what, what you thought? Yeah, I thought I gave up over it. Once I forgot the song, I knew it was done. Man, you silly. So once he ended up where I was at, like most of the time, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, you. Uh, we forgetting you forgetting somebody. I'm uh, you forgetting somebody. I mean, we gonna go oh, what from this group? One of your guys was in this draft class. Jalen Brunson was in this group. That's not what I'm talking yeah. about, but Jalen Brunson. That's crazy. Yeah, in his draft, and you're forgetting one of your guys. I said Ann Simons, right? Oh, oh, I know you said Ann Simons. Yeah, I said Ann Simons, and that was that's crazy too because. Of, I don't know if he ever gets out of Portland, but whatever. But he's averaging 25. And he's been shooting close to 90, 50, 40 the past couple, two years. And like I'm talking about like this, he's had like four or five games of like eight plus threes. It's kind of dumb what he's doing. It's like a Dane CJ hybrid, but like bounce everything. 12. Like, they got some sleepers in this draft. Shake Milton. Shake Milton was in his draft. Uh, DeAnthony Melton who's had a great career for himself, built a great career for himself. Bruce Brown has built a great career for himself. Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson, Jared Vanderbilt. Jared right. Vanderbilt has made a, a name for himself. Gary Trent Jr. Yeah, Okogie, Josh Allen. I mean, uh, yeah, Grayson o- Allen. Yep. Yeah, oh, Grayson Allen. Yeah, Okogie's one of the top defenders in the league. Lonnie Walker's got all the game. Yeah, like hmm. Lonnie Walker is natural. Yeah. Oh, Miles Bridges can go. Miles Bridges definitely can, man. Damn, Miles Bridges man. could go. Yeah, he could. What about that um twenty that two thousand nine draft? We went to that, and obviously the top ones you have is James, Steph, Demar, and Drew Holiday. And Demar is like a top twenty scorer all the time, isn't he? Top twenty five. Demar or something like that. is one. Of, yes. Yes. I mean, you look at Brandon Jennings. Brandon Jennings seventh game in. He had that fifty five point game. Uh, Yo, why are we gonna forget about uh? Like he, we, we, I don't know if it was a Clippers thing. 
because no one liked the Clippers at, at one point in time. Like we didn't like anybody on the Clippers team. Like yeah. DeAndre Jordan was one of the nicest guys on earth, but he just got the Clippers hate. Uh, yeah. But Blake Griffin was the number one pick of that draft. That's crazy. Blake was bro. Blake. I remember somebody asked. They were like, "Is Blake a Hall of Famer when you retire?" And I'm like, eh. I like Blake's game a lot, bro. He took a Detroit team to the playoffs, and he played on one good knee for, like, two or three years. And he went from being just a straight doctor to, at one point, you're like, bro, why is Blake averaging 24, 8, and 6? Blake was putting wow, numbers, man. And three and hammering that pit. you like, bro, when did he start moving like this? I knew he started killing when people stopped mentioning steroids. They were like, bro, because he was just cold. Remember, he was just, like, relying on his talent. And it was like, nah, bro, this boy, cold, cold, cold. I don't know who he went to, G. Well, no, I saw Blake Griffin in high school. Yeah, and he's my class. He, did, he, he didn't look that tall to me. And so I'm like, man, who this dude that's six six jumping like this? But I'm like, he ain't gonna translate because he's too short to be a power forward. And then I see him, I'm like, oh, okay, he's taller than I thought. Yeah, it's, I mean, even back in high school, it's like almost like when um, like Andrew Bynum and some of those dudes. Sometimes their length or their size seems a little bit different in person. It's like Roy Hibbert was 7'3", Andrew Bynum was like 7 feet 6'11", but he made Roy look like a baby. Like his presence, his presence was crazy. You look at Blake, it was like, well, that's a big boy. And he wasn't, he wasn't even that, you know, he wasn't a big, it's just physical, took up space and, had a presence. and moved like a motherfucking bear. Yeah, crazy presence. Yeah. yeah. That was a good, that was a great class. Point. Forward. Who else was up there that did a pretty dope class? I think um, 85 class was cold too, man. Patrick Ewing, Carl Malone, Joe Dumars, Chris Mullen. Because Joe Dumars was really like that. He was, yeah, but the strength, to throw that out there is kind of like a strength. I mean, Waven Tisdale was, he got the Waven, T- Waven Tisdale Award, the Freshman of the Year Award. He was in that draft class. Deadly Shrimp, I like that. Charles Oakley. Charles Oakley, when you do his numbers and everything, he's top 20 and rebounding and, you know what I mean, and all that other stuff. So Charles Oakley, I wanted to ask him before he ditched us on his show where he's supposed to interview him. He low-key got a silent B for Dennis Rodman. I can see that. Because he believes that, that, like, he's like, what's the difference between me and Dennis Rodman? I can do everything Dennis Rodman can do, but I was a playmaker. I was a bruiser. Bro, he averaged a career 10 or 11 rebounds. He, he legit said, he said defense. Bro, he was first team all defense. He was, he was an all-star. Like, I mean, what he did during those times, he was saying, like, no, if you kept me with that team, we would have won championships too. He uh-huh. beat up Dennis Rodman at, at his restaurant in Miami. He beat up everybody. I mean, I think he's too old to be fighting now, so I can, I can honestly assess the situation. Dennis Rodman was different. Dennis Rodman... He could, Dennis Rodman could really score the ball. He just he just used the narrative to act like he couldn't score the ball, and then he shrugged his shoulders when he made a three or free throw. Like I, Dennis was missing free throws on purpose, and he's just like, I ain't going to shoot. I'm just going to get 20 rebounds. But Dennis Rodman can guard one through five. He's one of the few players in NBA history that can guard one through five. I see, and like, and like, I, like, I don't see Charles Oakley coming out on a pick and roll and guarding Kyrie or, or Allen Iverson. That's right. That's right. I believe like, that. Man. Like Dennis Rodman can guard one through five. He's one of the – how many players in NBA history can guard one through five? Shit, only a couple. Draymond, Dennis, and you. I can't guard fives. I can't guard – I tried to do that shit a couple times. Boy, damn, these niggas big as hell, ain't you? can't man, see shit. Lewis Scola scored on me two times. It was the easiest two points I ever gave up. And i never forget Mo Cheek saying – Young man, you got to give a little bit more resistance than that. I'm like, yo, I don't know what this dude just did, but like, there was nothing I could do. Like, he just put his ass into me, took like one dribble, just t- and he kept the ball high, just turned around, just put it in. I'm like, God damn. Like, I can't guard fives. Bro, one time I guarded Brooke Lopez, like 18 feet away from the rim. We basically just walked to the rim into a smooth play. <laughs> <laughs> like, how is this bouncing this way? And it was like, you oh, like, need more resistance in my car. You see how strong that nigga is? See, I'm like, bro, we not switching no more. I said, damn, I can't even see behind him. I'm like, physically, bro, you niggas can get into it the bigs. They can break your arm, bro. For real. You can't, you can't get a, at one point when I realized my brother, they're just throwing me around. You can call a Myers and they're soft. It's like, no, you get it thrown. I'm like, bro, these dudes are literally 50. I need, they, they 258, 260. Most, most states, you're not getting around him. Oh, yeah. That's a big boy. 
Like you have to redo it. Just any city, like not even saying Philadelphia or like a better playing situation where you might, man, I wish I would have played in Orlando or I was always oh, a big, oh, out the big gate? fan of like the yeah, Vancouver Grizzly. Like when I was a kid, I was like, I was, I was a Sacramento Kings fan. So uh, I wanted to go there knowing I definitely did not want to go there based off of living in a city. You know what I mean? That's a really good question. I mean, I grew up just watching the Bulls, and they had two picks. They had two picks before I got picked. And so I thought I was going to play in Chicago. The only thing was that it might have, it was too close to home. So I didn't want to get b- bothered. Because, you know, out the gate, everybody's swerving down and going to the league with you. Like, everybody. Yeah, yeah. And then... By the time you get to your, by the time you, you by the time you get to preseason, according to everybody in your hometown, you changed, you switched it up. <laughs> yeah, no, that's I ain't real. even played an NBA game yet, but so Chicago, I did have two workouts there. Um, that's a really good question. I never thought about that. Looking back, I would just went. I would like to have gone anywhere that had a practice facility that I could have went, could have went and got better at night. Yeah. If I could have just went and got better at night, and the situation was about winning then it would have been I, I don't care where it was at like I would go to OKC knowing what I know now if I can just go in the gym work out at night and like have like a real like uh, player development and that's not no knock on any of my coaches because it wasn't them but it was just the way the situ- situation was set up you in practice at 3 o'clock and then shit it's either get back there before 7 or you're dealing with intramural dodgeball <laughs> you know what I mean so. Yeah, or it was there was a lot of Weight Watchers conventions when I walked into uh, to get my second workout of the day, which was rare. I rarely got a second workout in, or I couldn't go back in the gym at night and shoot. And then not like not everyone, all these kids like this was dope about our eras now. Like guys have access to gyms. Like Jordan Poole, like he had like four gyms he had access to in the bay that he can get to any time. Because sometimes you just need to be in the gym by yourself. You don't always want a coach hovering over you, telling you how they want you to play. Sometimes you got to get your confidence. And so he has a couple gyms that he uses in the Bay. And I'm like, man, like, why didn't nobody tell me this? No one told me this early in my career. Yeah, I remember when I was in uh, Philly, I used to go to Palestra. I used to go to St. Joe's. Mm-hmm. Or I would go, like, to uh, Philadelphia University. We just started breaking it down, too. It's just like, shit, like, to try to go shoot at night once the season started up and stuff, it's like, you might be there, like, fucking, you might not have open until, like, 10 p.m., you know what I mean? True story. And it was just yeah. and traveling and all that sometimes. I, I think one thing I wish I would have known, I think I heard Brandon, Brandon Ingram and Julius Random say that Kobe said, shoot as soon as you hit the city. So, like, as soon as they land in the city, so say it'd be 11 p.m., they would go get shots from there at that night. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. I, I, I always thought I wish I could have done that looking back. Point forward. So in saying all that was said today, we just really want to appreciate everybody for being a listener, being a fan of the Point Forward podcast. Um, we've had so much fun uh, this season. Uh, shout out to the Vox team. Um, shout out to uh, everybody that has uh, helped us along the way. My man Sam Silver, uh, Patience Ramsey. Am I forgetting by any way? Shout out to our guy. Um, uh, what do you call him? Super agent, baby super agent. He's not a super agent yet. Uh, Jelani Floyd. Jelani. Uh, Jelani. Um, am I getting anybody else? Um, Another emphasis on shout out to all the listeners, man. Because shit, sometimes, man, people we like borrow money when we listen to this show. You know what I mean? So shout out to the folks that really because we're telling them how to pay us back and they want to hear it. Yeah, or just whatever it is. But shout out to people that actually tune in. Because to be honest with you, like my attention spans all of like thirty five seconds, and you know I got I got friends that sometimes I don't even know what the hell they be doing, so they really tune in weekly. It's dope. Especially considering, you know, we could be talking to our mom by ourselves. So that's big time. No, no, true story. And this, and I always want to say a uh, shout out to the fans who they catch me in traffic a lot. I'm like, do I run into all of my listeners? Because I've run into a lot of people that listen. And so um, appreciate your support. And hopefully uh, you're implementing anything that we say of value into your lives. Um, season three is a wrap. Until next time, enjoy the break. Mm-hmm. Thank you.